Understanding the Google Analytics interface will help you find and analyze information more effectively. When you first log into your Google Analytics account, you'll see a screen similar to the one on the slide. In this example, the user has access to three Google Analytics accounts. Click on the name of the account you would like to access. This takes you to the account-specific page where you manage the setup and configuration of your account and profiles. You can toggle to your other Google Analytics accounts using the drop-down menu at the top right of the page. Each profile for the selected account is displayed under Website Profiles. From this screen, you can access reports for each profile. You can also edit configuration settings, add filters, add or change user permissions, and add or remove profiles altogether. Click the View Reports link for a profile and you'll be taken to the dashboard for that profile. A sample dashboard is shown on the slide. We've called out the user interface features that are available on all reports. Your report navigation, scheduled email settings, help links, data export options, and the calendar. Note that there are several places to find help information. The help link on the top right of the page takes you to the Google Analytics Help Center. Also, on the left margin of the page, you'll see a Help Resources box with links. The dashboard is where you put all the summary information about your site that you want to see at a glance. To add a report to the dashboard, just go to the report you want to add and then click Add to Dashboard. On the dashboard itself, you can position the report summaries however you like and delete the ones you don't need. In the left-hand navigation, you'll see that your reports are organized into categories. Visitors, traffic sources, content, goals, and e-commerce. If you don't have an e-commerce site or don't have e-commerce reporting enabled, you won't see the e-commerce section in your navigation. To view reports, click on any of the categories and the reports available within that category will appear. Some reports contain additional sub-reports, like the AdWords report under traffic sources. Click the arrows to see the sub-reports. To change your date range, click the arrow next to the active date range displayed at the upper right of all reports. You can then use the calendar or the timeline to select a new date range. The calendar tab allows you to select date ranges by clicking on the day and month within the calendar, or you can type the dates into the date range boxes. The timeline tab has a date slider that you can resize and move to cover any range of dates. You can see your site's traffic trends in the timeline. You can select a date range to compare to the current selected date range. When using the timeline to set a comparison date range, you'll see two date sliders instead of just one. You can use a comparison date range to see how your site is performing month over month, year over year, or even from one day to another. The date range and comparison date ranges you select will apply to all your reports and graphs. Most reports include an overtime graph at the top. You can make this graph display data by day, week, or month. You can also compare two metrics on the same graph to see how they are correlated. Click the arrow in the top left of the graph. Then, click the Compare Two Metrics link and select which two metrics you want to compare. In this example, we're graphing visitors versus average time on site. You can roll your mouse over the graph and see actual numbers. You can export data from any report. There are four formats, PDF, XML, CSV, and tab separated. Simply click on the Export button at the top of any report page and select the format you want. Next to the Export button, you'll see an Email button. Click it and you'll see a screen with two tabs, Send Now and Schedule. You can schedule reports to be delivered daily, weekly, monthly, or quarterly. You also have the option to select what format to send them in, such as PDF or CSV. The email scheduling feature provides an easy way to automatically distribute specific report data to the people who need it. The overview reports in each section contain a set of curriculum links. You can use these links to quickly find information that you need. In some cases, these links access reports that are not available from the left report navigation. You can always see where you are in a report hierarchy by looking at the title and the breadcrumbs at the top of the report. Look at the example on the slide. From the title, you can see that you are in the referring link report and that you're looking at traffic from the link blogger.com slash home. From the breadcrumbs, you can see that you are in the referring sites report hierarchy. You can click on any of the breadcrumb links to go back to that report. Nearly every report contains a short narrative that summarizes the traffic that's included in the report. The scorecard below the narrative provides metric aggregates and averages for the traffic. 
Each box in the scorecard contains a question mark button. Clicking it opens a small window that explains how the metric is calculated. Most reports provide tabs that show different sets of data. The Site Usage tab shows metrics such as the number of pages viewed per site, the average time on site, and the bounce rate. The Goal Conversion tab shows the conversion rates for each of your goals. If you've enabled e-commerce reporting on your profile settings page, you'll see an e-commerce tab. This tab shows metrics such as e-commerce revenue, number of transactions, and average value. The AdWords Campaigns reports have an additional tab called Clicks. This tab contains AdWords-related metrics such as clicks, cost, revenue per click, and ROI. You can segment table data in different ways using the Dimension pull-down menu. So, for example, if you want to see the traffic in your keywords report broken out by city, you just select city from the pull-down menu. In the Keywords and Search Engines reports, you have the option to analyze just paid, just non-paid traffic, or all search traffic. Simply click on the links above the scorecard to make your selection. Some reports allow you to view results by hour. On these reports, you could select the view you want by clicking on the clock button in the top right corner next to Graph By. There are five different views available in most reports. The first icon organizes your report data into a table. This is the default view for many reports. The second icon allows you to create a pie chart based on any one of the metrics in the report. The third icon shows a bar graph based on any metric you select. The fourth icon is the comparison bar graph view. It allows you to quickly see whether each entry in the table is performing above or below average. The fifth icon allows you to instantly see a summary report with graphs for the traffic you're analyzing. Columns within tables can be sorted in both ascending and descending order simply by clicking on the column heading. The arrows next to the heading title indicate the order in which the results are listed. A down arrow indicates descending order, and an up arrow indicates ascending order. By default, all reports with tables display 10 rows. To display more than 10 rows, go to the bottom of your report and click the drop-down menu arrow next to Show Rows. You can display up to 500 rows per page. You can use the Find box at the bottom left of your reports to narrow or refine your results. For example, if you are looking at the All Traffic Sources report and you want to only see traffic from the Google domain, you can type in Google and select Containing. Or, to exclude all traffic from the Google domain, you would select Excluding.